Hello and you're very welcome to the first video in our webcast series on the topic of perspective projection. So in this video we're going to look at what is perspective uh, in general and how what components do we need in order to create a perspective projection on our two-dimensional sheet of paper. Um, so we're going to first of all begin with the very first question there, what is perspective? So here we can see the example of a set of railway tracks disappearing off into the distance. Now in spite of the actual rails themselves being the same width apart, as they get further away they seem to disappear off to a single point. So we can just draw in our lines here and we can follow them there and we see they all disappear off to a single point. Um, likewise we can see that the railway sleepers that we have here, the ones that are the closest to us, appear larger than the ones further away. And this is what it means when something is to seen in perspective, that objects near to us are are appear larger than objects further away. And that lines that are parallel, even though they're the same angle, they disappear off to a single point. And this is how we see the world. So we actually see the world in perspective. So really to create a perspective image of an object gives us a very realistic view of the object. Um, a good example of that is Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting, The Last Supper. Um, here we can see the Last Supper like that, but if you look at the actual room itself, if you look at the corners of the room, they all disappear back to a single vanishing point here like so. And actually da Vinci himself was one of the key people who developed this idea of perspective um, to make his drawings look more realistic. And in this case he actually cleverly used it because all the lines go back to the centre of the image and over the image of Christ here like that. So he's really trying to draw our attention back to the central focus of the painting itself. So that's um, one of the most famous examples of what's known as one point perspective because all our lines come back to one single point, one single focus like that. So what we're going to do then is look at what are the key things that we need on our um, to create this uh, a technical um, perspective projection of an object. So here we have just a 3D setup of those components. We're going to begin by looking first of all at the spectator which represents the observer, or the person looking at um, the world around them. So our spectator here has a particular height which is important because obviously if our spectator was taller he'd be looking at the world slightly different than if he was shorter. Um, and likewise he has a position. So at the moment he's standing in the middle of the railway tracks, uh, not the safest thing to, in the world to do, but if he was to move to the left or to the right well, he'd see the railway tracks differently, so our perspective image will be able to capture that difference in uh, image. Uh, we can see also here we have a ground plane like so, or horizontal plane, um, simply just representing the ground. And here we have what's known as the picture plane, the PP or the picture plane. And that's uh, something similar to a sheet of glass, um, a vertical sheet of glass. And it's on this plane here that we're going to draw our perspective image of our object. You can see where our picture plane crosses the ground, gives us the ground line like so. And we also have this line here known as the horizon line. And where our likes of our railway tracks, where they disappear, they finish off on the horizon line. And that horizon line is gotten by our spectator pretty much just looking straight in front of him, level uh, with the ground, and that gives us our horizon line. So because he's looking level, whatever height our spectator is, the horizon line is going to be the same distance or the same height off the ground line, off the ground itself. Um, so there are main components involved in creating a perspective image of an object. How we actually create the image itself is by taking first of all a vanishing point and um, so a vanishing point is gotten by our getting our spectator to look parallel with um, whatever line he's trying to draw so the railway tracks are moving off in this direction so if he looks parallel with that you can see it gives us a vanishing point and that's the point that our railway tracks are going to appear disappear to so like so so in our image there's our railway tracks disappearing off towards our vanishing point. If we want to find the individual sleepers, what we do is we're able to take each of the points, so left and right, and we bring them back to our spectator, so back to a single point like so, and where those lines, those projection lines cross the picture plane, gives us the image of the sleepers. So there's our first sleeper, 
you can see do the same for each of our sleepers and where they cross the picture plane gives us the representation of it and you can see as they go off into the distance they're getting smaller and smaller and the space between each of the sleepers appears to get smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually it disappears into this vanishing point over here so they're the key components involved in creating our perspective and um, what I want to do next then is just look at how we actually use those um, to create our perspective image and why is it that images that are closer to us appear larger than images that are further away. So what we're going to do is going to set it up in two dimensions over here and in 3D over here of the same thing. So here we have our spectator seen from above, here's our railway tracks and here we have our picture plane seen from above. So we'll just put in the picture plane um, over here. So there's our spectator, there's our picture plane like so. Um, we can see the picture plane where it crosses the ground gives us our ground line like so and we're just drawing our ground line here so this is going to and there's our picture plane so this is going to represent the front elevation looking in so looking straight in at our picture plane where we're going to see our perspective image of our object we're also going to draw in an end view and um, just for the purpose of explaining things we don't actually need to draw in our end view when it comes to solving our perspective questions but in this case it just make, make things a little bit easier to explain so there's our picture plane seen from the side and we're going to take each of our railway sleepers and just draw them in again looking from the side. Um, so that's our, our basic setup for what we're going to try to do. Now when we're starting off drawing a perspective image of an object we first of all look at um, some, anything that we have as a true length or a true distance. So if we look at our railway sleepers here we can see that the first sleeper here is already on the picture plane so that won't appear smaller if it's on the picture plane well the image of it is going to be the same size as the original um, object so let's see that so there's our original size of that so we can take him straight up and because that sleeper is on the ground he's going to appear on the ground here as well so there he is on the ground line like so um, okay well that's our first one drawn in what we want to do then is draw the next sleeper so the second one coming back here again we draw our projection lines back to our spectator and where they cut the picture plane is going to give us the image of that sleeper. So here we have it in our plan view we can see we take them down to our spectator down to our single point and we see because they're narrowing as they go back to the spectator the width between them appear smaller and that's actually the reason why things further away appear smaller because of this angle um, that we are creating here narrowing it um, and when we project it up that means that's going to be the new width for our second sleeper to locate the position of it we're just going to bring it up to our spectator in our end view and where it crosses the picture plane again we're going to bring it across and that locates the position of it and you can see it's above the ground line as it goes off further into the distance so we're going to do the same thing with our second sleeper again there it is where it crosses the picture plane gives us the image of it and here we can see the same thing so we bring our lines down to our spectator and we can see because this line is further away than the first one the angle again appears narrower so this image appears narrower again same thing when it comes to our end view the angle that we have here is getting reduced so that that means that the distance between the two of them is also getting reduced so and again that's why our perspective works so same with the third uh, sleeper same way here again joining it up to our spectator in plan and elevation and that's going to give us a reduced size and this is the same thing for each one of the sleepers and um, so on and so forth going off and off and off into the distance now just at this stage if I actually join up each of the side points from my sleepers we can see that that's going to give me my railway tracks disappearing off to a single point so it all disappears to this single point here and that's where our vanishing point is going to be so there it is in 2d here we have it over here in 3d and if we want to know well, how do we actually find our vanishing point to find our vanishing point we simply just look in the direction of the line we're trying to find so in this case here our railway tracks are disappearing in this, th this direction here and they're level so if we get our spectator to look parallel with them that'll find us our vanishing point so here he is our railway track is level so if he looks straight in front of himself level like so that gives us a line like that that's our horizon line the line when our spectator looks level it's the same height as our spectator off the ground and our vanishing point is on that likewise in our plan view the railway tracks are moving back in this direction so if we look parallel with that 
you can see that locates as our vanishing point. Um, so here we have it in 3D, that gives us our vanishing point as well. Uh, and that's on our horizon line. So that's actually um, how we set up our um, perspective projection. Now it must be said that we don't actually need the end view. That's only drawn in in this particular example just by way of explanation. All we need is the front elevation and the plan view to actually construct our perspective image. But that's all the key components put into place here. And you might look at that and say, well, what is this picture plane or how come I don't have a picture plane? I don't walk around with a, a piece of glass um, in front of my face giving me an image. But if you actually look at how we see the world, if we take an object like say the Eiffel Tower here and take your eye, well, the rays of light from the object pass through the lens of your eye. So that's, I suppose technically, that's our spectator and they're cast to the nerves at the back of your eye like that. So that's actually the picture plane. So you do actually have a picture plane. Um, but because it's behind your spectator here, because it's behind the lens of your eye, when the image goes into your eye, it actually ends up upside down by the time it reaches the picture plane. So uh, it's a curious fact that small babies when they're small, um, or babies when they're small even, um, actually see the world upside down. Um, and it's not until um, after a few weeks that the brain itself um, is able to correct what we see and put it the right way around or the way that we see the world. So you actually do have a picture plane. Um, but obviously for the purposes of us creating a um, perspective image, um, the idea of having an upside down image or an image that's drawn on a curved picture plane um, doesn't make sense. So what we do is we put our picture plane in front of the uh, spectator. So that gives us our perspective image. So that's um, the real world application of um, the theory that we've just seen there. Um, so this is the first video in our series on perspective. So hopefully this has been some help clarifying what's going on with our perspective. And if you want more information, stay tuned to the rest of the videos. Thank you very much.